Hi, Uncle Tony. Um, my name is James. I am an auto shop teacher and a good fan of yours. Um, decent fan, anyway. <laughs> um, so this this is a response to your EFI conversion debacle video. Um, I wanted to chime in with uh, my two cents because I, I think that's what you're looking for right now. Um, so two things. We'll, we'll talk about the challenges with EFI in a box, and I have an idea for making carburetors work. All right, so backstory. Um, with a carburetor, you, this is all stuff you know. I'm just trying to establish this stuff. Carburetor adds fuel in proportion to the airflow going through it. So it's really important to not have a vacuum leak with your intake of your carburetor. You got to have a good gasket between the carburetor and the intake. You got to have a good gasket between the intake and the cylinder head. Your intake valve has to seal. So really three things, carb, intake, intake valve. Those things need to seal up. If your engine is sparking when it needs to spark and flow in the air it needs to flow, it'll create a vacuum. It'll pull air through the carburetor and the carburetor will give it the fuel it needs. You know, assuming you got the right fuel pressure feeding the carburetor and everything. Um, so that's pretty easy. If you've got a miss for whatever reason, it's going to reduce your vacuum, which is going to reduce the fuel that your carburetor adds, and it's going to self-regulate. Um, so it's pretty simple. Um, the problem with the EFI in the box systems is... Um, you still have to have all that good sealing. You got to avoid um, vacuum leaks on your intake, but you also have to avoid any kind of exhaust leaks between the spark plug and the O2 sensor. So um, the O2 sensors, they're, they're measuring oxygen, right? Um, if they, they are comparing the amount of oxygen in your exhaust to the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere, outside of your exhaust. When there's a difference in the amount of oxygen, they act like a battery. And at full power, they make nine tenths of a volt. If most of them are designed so that if your fuel mixture is right, they make 0 0.1, sorry, 0 0.45 volts, just under half a volt. Um, that's the sweet spot for an O2 sensor. If you have an exhaust leak anywhere, um, that CO2 from the combustion is going to spit out. And if there's any reversion, which if you've got long tube headers, there's always reversion, right? That's why long tube headers kick ass. Um, that creates that, that vacuum pulse. And if there's an exhaust leak, it will leak oxygen in to the exhaust. So if you've got an exhaust leak, it's you're losing CO2 carbon dioxide that the O2 sensor should be reading. And it's going to read that oxygen that came from outside of the engine after the spark event. And the O2 sensor is going to tell the computers, hey, I've got too much oxygen in the exhaust. We need to up the fuel mixture. So if you have a miss, and for example, say you get a spark plug that's fouled out with gas and it misses, then you're not going to ignite the fuel air mixture that's in your exhaust stream. So you're going to have fuel air mixture going down your exhaust. That air is going to be detected by the O2 sensor and the O2 sensor is going to tell the computer to increase the fuel. The O2 sensor doesn't know that a bunch of gas droplets just blew past it. It doesn't measure gas, it measures oxygen. So if you have a miss for any reason or an exhaust leak, then the O2 sensor is going to see that extra oxygen and increase the fuel. So if you've got an exhaust leak on your headers, on like your header flange or something like that, you're going to get terrible mileage and it's going to run rich all the time because the oxygen sensor is going to see the oxygen and want to balance that out by adding more fuel. So it's just going to dump fuel into the engine. 
So with the EFI and the box system, you've got to have a perfect intake with no vacuum leaks and a perfect exhaust between the spark plug and the O2 sensor where there's no false oxygen ingressing your exhaust system. And usually you have to have 12, 20, 30 inches of pipe after the O2 sensor. Because if you have open headers and you put that O2 sensor right at the collector and you've only got like a, an inch or two of collector after the O2 sensor, you're gonna get reversion in the back of that header all the time. The O2 sensor is gonna see that and it's just gonna spike the, the fuel uh, ratio. Um, so that's the challenge with the EFI in the box. The way to correct that, the way the manufacturers do it, is they have an airflow sensor or a mass airflow sensor um, upstream of your intake of your throttle. And that measures the amount of air going in the engine. And if there's a miss, it's going to see that there's a dip in airflow. And with smart programming, if your O2 sensor sees a sudden spike in oxygen, and also senses a, a little drop in RPM, then all three of those things correlate to you've got a miss and it lights up your check engine light. Um, so these EFI in a boxes, if we had a air sensor that you can put on top of your throttle body under your air thinner or something like that, that was kind of a, a trump card for the O2 sensor, that could eliminate a lot of problems with the, uh, the EFI in a box systems, but it would definitely add complexity. Mass airflow sensors are not cheap. As far as making the carburetor work with gas, um, I think a lot of the root causes, I've, I've got a little four cylinder 84 Mustang and cold starts, fine. Uh, warm day, half a pump of the gas, sets the choke, starts right up. If it's an ice cold day, a full pump, once to the floor, back up, starts right up um, to Weber carburetor on little Ford 2.3. Um, starts great cold in the morning, but hot soap, I definitely have the problem with gas boiling over into the intake, flooding it out. I've got to, like, as I'm cranking it, I'm slowly pushing the gas pedal because it changes every time. So somewhere, somewhere between just cracking the throttle and all the way on the floor will be the sweet spot where it, it wants to blow the excess gas out and actually start running right. Um, but it is embarrassing when I always have that cloud of rich gas exhaust um, come out the back of the car. That's kind of embarrassing when I do that because I'm an auto shop teacher at a local high school. Um, the way to eliminate evaporation and hot soak problems with a carburetor is to eliminate the float bowls, period, done. We might be at a point with electronic fuel pumps and fuel pressure sensors that we can replace the float bowl with a block that has a really precise um, pressure regulator in it that does essentially what uh, the float does, you know, because it, it wants to keep that fuel at just the right gravity um, to feed the jets and everything like that. If we can manage that without a mechanical thing that's attached to a spring and this chamber that's open to the environment, if we can totally eliminate that with a, a manifold, a fuel manifold that feeds the carburetor and has no way to evaporate. Um, and the fuel pressure cuts off completely when you turn the key off, the fuel supply cuts off, and then the fuel pressure is immediately back when you turn the key back on. I think you might be able to solve the, the, the cold soak, the choke, the hot soak problems, all those problems. Because if, if you can up the fuel pressure to the jets for a moment when you're starting it, then you don't need the choke, right? You're, you're gonna force a little bit of extra gas in there. So one or two extra PSI 
on the jets, you'll get the gas you need to get the engine started. Um, it, it would be pretty simple to have an RPM window switch that if it's more than 300 RPM, then your engine's starting. If it's less than 300 RPM, it's not starting yet. You're still cranking. So that would be a pretty solid way to manage that if we just had a way to regulate the pressure as precisely as a float level does because you're talking such a slight change in pressure that would be the way to make a carburetor work you can make any holly carburetor could be vacuum secondary or double pumper you could make that main body work if you eliminated the float bowl and put a new machined block that was a fuel manifold and had super precise control of the fuel pressure without a float and without a chamber that has fuel and air sloshing around inside of it, that would be the way. So yeah, that's my two cents.